Hello and welcome to Kanbanize. In our first tutorial we looked at the Kanban board and in this video we'll be looking at the Kanban card. The card represents the work itself and can be described as either an initiative or a work item. For now we might look upon each card as a folder holding all the important data or the little stuff that you really need to know like when do we have to deliver this thing by? Is this a bug or a feature request? Do we have the specifications for Bob's widgets? These and many more questions can be answered by the Kanban card. So let's open a typical card. Double click anywhere to create it. The first thing we need is a card title. This will be displayed in practically every card view while the card's working its way through your boards. So this makes perfect sense. Once we update the card, we'll get a unique ID that will be displayed here. And you've also got a bunch of buttons to look at over here. The first one dictates the card's color. Hmm, nice. The next sets the card's priority. Anything from low to five alarm fire. Next, we have the option of applying a template. I'll do another video on how to set up card templates. But for now, let's apply the bug template. The style of card has its own striking color, a brief outline in the description area and a preset tag. You can set up extremely complex templates. To find out more, check out the knowledge base article. The last button is probably the most obvious. The X in the corner lets you close the card. But don't worry, if there are any unsafe changes, the system will ask you to confirm before closing. Down here, we should add some more detail to the description. Put in as much info here as you want, and up the top here, you'll find the usual stuff. Bold, italic, hyperlink, upload a code snippet, add an image, create a table. Click away. It's important to get this right, but you can always go back later. Related to this are the attachments. Yep you can upload from your computer. But Kanbanize isn't primarily designed to be a storage tool. So you can also upload from a range of common file storage options. If you have heavy data, you probably have one of these set up already. You can also get a URL link up here for web link. Here we have the card's assignee field. This is the card's owner. The buck stops here. If you want to collaborate on a card or an initiative, you can use the watcher field, although there is always only one card owner. We'll come back to the other card fields in a moment. Next, we have the deadline. Click and select the date, and you can set up a notification for when the day arrives. You can also track deadlines by using board filtering and the MyQ feature. And there's also a predefined dashboard widget to track overdue cards. Size another huge topic. To begin with, I recommend using standard values based on metrics you've already got a grasp of, the amount of hours you think it'll take to complete, or revenue, or anything else. Check out the Knowledge Base article on this topic. Tags are quite sneaky. You can tag a card for lots of different reasons. They're great for searching, archiving, reporting, and for using business rules to their full effect. Once again, check out the KB, or chat to the success team. We're quite friendly. Next up, we have subtasks. This is intended to literally be a checklist of minor items required for the card's completion. They can be assigned separately, but I must emphasize that they're intended to be a things to do list. If a subtask requires more attention, no problems. Just convert it to a card in its own right. We've talked about applying watches. The other default option is card type. We know that we can use swim lanes to loosely define types of work, but assigning a card type allows you to define the work further. While in the plus section, we also have custom fields, and they can be used in so many different ways. You can describe this field in terms of text, date, number, contributor, link, or dropdown. All bases are covered. You can use these things in so many different ways, and they help with reporting, searching, and visualizing. You can also move the fields around in the stack. You can probably see their potential for quickly and accurately describing the job in hand. Next, we have card links. This is a huge 
subject. But essentially, a card can either be unlinked, a relatively rare phenomenon, or it takes its place as part of a bigger plan. Most cards that are seeded from initiatives will be child cards, but you could also choose to create a parent for the open card. It's probably obvious, but child cards can themselves set up child cards of their own, so it's eminently possible for the card that you're working on to be a great, great, great grandchild of a parent initiative. You can also stage workflows through predecessor-successor relationships. This will effectively prevent successor cards from being moved into progress until the predecessor card has been completed. This is handy for jobs that roll out in a strict sequence. You can also create relative relationships. These are for where two disparate parts of the big picture need to keep in touch with each other, but neither depends on the other for completion. For example, the marketing team might need to liaise with the production area, but each of these parts are completely unique with their own challenges. You can also link this card to any existing card or initiative. In the boards that you have access to in your workspace, this is very useful for times when work arrives and needs to be specifically related to another part of the job. And yes, the link you set up can be any of the ones I've just described. I hope that all made sense. Don't worry if it's a bit fuzzy right now. We'll return to card links throughout the tutorials. And to fully understand them, it's probably best to see them in action. One compelling reason for using links is that you can filter your boards to track all parts of the main project without the background noise of unrelated work items cluttering up to view. Along the bottom is a mini-map to help with navigation. Here you'll find the specific board, workflow and swim lane that you happen to find yourself in. Also along the bottom, you have the map laid out by columns. A good shortcut to move the card is to just select your intended location before updating the work item. And hey presto, the card relocates automatically. But if you intend to keep working on the card, just hit Ctrl and S. OK, we now have a set of options running along the top. We've mentioned subtasks, but it's worth taking a look in their own dedicated area. Here you can set up subtasks, assign them, edit them, reorder them, delete them, and you can even convert them to tasks in their own right. I don't want to labour the point on subtasks, but they really are just the things to do list. Don't try to perform miracles in here. It's a great place to bury work packages and nobody likes unpleasant surprises. The comments section is a huge journal for collating all communication and notes relating to the card. You can send emails, at notifications, or just add comments. The important thing is that every update can be recorded like a narrative. This is really handy for avoiding email ping pong when handing projects over. You can also attach documents, photos, video, anything that might be useful later. The next tab is also handy to get a breakdown of any and all changes that have occurred to the card. We've only just opened this card and we've already got a few events clocked up in the history. Most of it is just a record of updates, but sometimes this data can be useful. The metrics tab is really useful if you want to track time. How long did the job sit in requested before being moved into progress? The accrued time is further broken down into lead time, log time, and it also records the amount of time the card was blocked. To get a better view of the big picture, you can also select the time for all child cards to be displayed as well. In the links tab, we have all links displayed, effectively showing all of the card's parents, siblings, kids, and any other dependencies. You can create or delete links here and view the relationships in either table, bar chart, pie chart, or board format. You can also configure the results to filter the data further. I 
feel that's probably enough about card mechanics for the time being. Apologies for the information overload. Use as many or as few of the card features as you're comfortable with. When taken all together, they can seem somewhat overwhelming. But in reality, you can keep the details quite simple and still cram a whole load of information into the system. Let's update and take a look at the front of the card. Pretty basic, just the title and each card's relationship to its relatives. We can do better than that. Over here in the side ribbon, you've got the configure card view button. Open it up and feel free to adjust the settings. I'd suggest turning everything up to 11 in the early stages while you're getting used to the system and you can prune them when you work out the most important indicators. You can also set up default assignees, templates and card creation positions. I never really use these, but it might be useful if you have a very predictable workflow. I should briefly mention the board filter. Sometimes you just want to sort out the wheat from the chaff, so this allows you to specify precisely the composition of the cards that will be displayed. Just cards assigned to you, only cards with size value greater than five, you get the idea. You can save frequently needed filters and load them again as required. One final card related point is card tokens. These fall into two categories, blockers and stickers. Blockers prevent cards from being moved further along in their swim lane until the reason for blocking them has been overcome. These should be used judiciously, but they should be taken seriously. Stickers, on the other hand, merely mark the cards to highlight important news. You can customize your own tokens. Say it with stickers. I realize I have just blitzed you with information and some of the topics could definitely benefit from further elaboration, but this was intended just to be a primer. Remember, if you have any questions at all, you can access the knowledge base through the question mark symbol at the top of the board. Or for more detailed queries, get in touch with support. If you want to have a chat about setting up your workflows on a grander scale, get in touch with the success team. If they don't have the answer, they work beside the people that design the product. So it shouldn't take too long to get you sorted out. I almost forgot another couple of things that I really must mention. This hamburger looking thing is your card context menu. It gives you quick access to many of the features we've just run through while the card is closed. Additionally, you can move it, edit it, block it, unblock it, set a follow up or send it straight to done. You can also delete it. Card context is handy for doing updates to a number of cards simultaneously click and swipe a bunch of cards, choose the option on one of them, and they'll all change automatically. These additional commands can also be accessed on previously updated cards through the hamburger again, up here at top right inside the card. And that really is where we're going to end this. We're here if you have any questions, and we're always happy to help. Have a great day and happy canvanizing.